How y'all doing? I'm making this video about another species of dinosaurs that was actually on display in the Samuel Museum of Oklahoma Natural History here in Norman, where I live. It is a Ceratopsian by name of Aquilops americanus. This was discovered um, some time ago in Montana, and it's been you know and been published. Um, let's see, about last year or so. And funny thing is, when I was at um, one of my classes involved working at the Sam Noble lab, uh, doing a little picking out some teeth there, and I noticed that um, the, the guy who runs the, um, the cleaning lab and one of the other volunteers was working on something, I inquired what it is, and they said, well, it's a new species, but we're not allowed to talk about it until it's published. I left it at that. But I recognized it was a lower jaw, and, um, and he said it was a new species of Ceratopsian. And then later I just found out in the newspaper so a couple of years later and it was in the news and well it looked like exactly what I was um, saw at the, at the lab so it obviously got published. So I looked it up and uh, here I am about to tell you about it. And I'm going to put the link down there to the, um, um, to the paper below you know, so you can see the direct source. So here we have this new Ceratopsian species Aquilops americanus which is you know, e you know, American eagle face. And this is a the only this is a holotype, meaning it's the first one ever found, and it'll be used to describe future species. And it's very interesting because this consists of a you know m pretty much a, you know, a, just a skull, um, you know the, the full skull, lower crushed and bent sideways, but it is distinctive enough. Let's see, it was found in Montana here, and um, the paper was done by I'm reading off my notes here. It's a Fark, Maxwell, Cefeli, and Weddell, and. Um, it's, you know, it is Ceratopsian because it does have the rostral, which is that upper beak. You notice that Ceratopsians, these are your horned dinosaurs that you know, are like your Triceratops and all that. So, you know, they, they all have the frill and they may, and may or may not have horns. But one of the distinct features about them is that is the upper beak um, part, the rostral. So, and this one has a boss on it, you know, which is a little um, stub there. And, you know, let's see. Um, yeah, so, and uh, let's see, it dates back to um, early, you know, to the Al um, let's see, Albion, which is about 100, 409 million years ago, which is in the Cretaceous, early Cretaceous. And, and fascinating as it all, fascinating as it is, um, it, this also, this species right here, it has very primitive features and found in North America. Now, the other two primitive Ceratopsians that we associate with the beginning of the Ceratopsian um, family are the Protoceratops and Leptoceratops. And those ones, they, they have a small frill, they're very small, no horns on them. This one has is even smaller one is smaller than that, um, about the size of a cat, large cat, and you know that's estimated just on the skull, and, you know, and uh, but, but even though they don't have the rest of the body, but it's roughly about that size. And what I do like about it, it you know, just kind of looking at the skull, and you know, even though it's kind of crushed, it's still neat to look at. But one of the most fascinating things about it is that they can use that to understand the migration of the Ceratopsians. See, up until with this, uh, up with this find, we don't know much about you know when the Ceratopsians moved to North America. We know they started off in Asia because Protoceratops and Leptoceratops were there, and those are the primitive ones. And in America and parts of Asia, we have more um, derived advanced forms that we're more familiar with: larger, uh, more ornate spikes, more ornate um, frills, you know, and horns on its face. So we under so we see that. But the question is, when did this sort of happen? This guy, this guy kind of gave the answer to that. So here we have an animal that has, shares um, traits closer to Protoceratops and Leptoceratops, but here it is found in America about 100, 409 million years ago, and then later we start to see, you know, and most likely what would happen is, um, well, we all know the story about how the, the first Americans came to the United States through Great Bering Strait. Well, that, instead of, well, instead of Great Bering Strait, that's called Beringia. And there was a time again during the Cretaceous where North America was connected to Asia, just like that before. It's done that a few times, and so here it was in the Cretaceous. This happened, and that's when you start seeing the migration of many animals, including T. Rex. They, you know, they cross that area as well. And of course, by the time they crossed there, they were kind of restricted to the western side of the United States because at that time you still had that inland sea going through the center of the United States at the time. See, where I am in Oklahoma, most of this place was underwater, except for the southeast, you know, the southeast part near Toka County, and, you know, um, Cimarron County, I believe, where Black Mesa is, tallest area in Oklahoma. So, yeah, so this state, along with many other central United States, was sort of cut off. And then, 
Of course, over the course of the Cretaceous, those seas start to recede and dry up, and that allows further migrations of more adverse forms. And so this species of um, a Ceratopsian, um, what we know, it sort of kind of gives a direct, you know, almost a direct answer to when Ceratopsians started moving into the, you know, to North America through uh, Beridia, which we know is Great Bering Strait, throughout, you know, throughout that time. And let's see, in the skull itself, um, the, let's see, well, uh, there'll be pictures of this that you've probably already seen, and you can easily find them online, but, you know, about, I'd say about roughly, they're they made about the size of a large cat. Um, and with the traits involved, there's a particular hollow type, it's probably a sub-adult. There's some features that they see as juvenile, but there's also one or two features they see um, when they start to get into adult phase. So, yeah, it's not much to say, but yeah, go ahead and read, you know, more details of that. I just want to let you know, and, and you know, because I think that if you're going to study, you know, in, any sort of science there, best to go to the actual article and as opposed to look at Wikipedia. Wikipedia, as you'll probably know, especially through college, is a good starting point, but you've got to be very skeptical on sources. My Renaissance teacher once told me of a time, um, looking up, oh, um, a Marie Antoinette. She found out that the guy who wrote this was some guy living in a basement somewhere in Europe, and he didn't get any of his information right. You know, so, yeah, because that's, that, that's going off tangent. But I'll link, I'll link down below about, uh, um, Aquilops Americanus. Sorry, I'm still reading from my notes here. It's a fascinating read. Not too long, but you know, great some good illustrations and gives you an idea, you know, further what paleontology works into. Well, hope you all enjoyed this. Y'all have a nice day.